This is a project that I'm doing only because of you guys. What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping in. Today I'm excited to bring you a video for the installation process of the Z1 Motorsports rear diff bushing for the Infiniti Q50, Q60. I'm really excited that Z1 decided to release this product. It is much needed in the community because everyone's rear diff bushings are failing at this point and if they haven't already, they soon will. So this is a part that we certainly need and it looks to be a very well thought out, very well engineered part um, to uh, replace the, the failing diff bushing for the Q50, Q60s currently. I gotta say, this is a nightmare project. It is gonna take several hours. Uh, if it's summertime like it is right now, you're gonna sweat through a number of shirts, um, probably ruin, break, bend a bunch of different tools as I did and you'll see throughout this video. Uh, but with the help of the instructions on Z1 Motorsports website and with this video, I am confident you'll be able to tackle this project on your own. Again, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take a little frustration. You're gonna get dirty, you're gonna get annoyed, um, but I think you can handle it. It's not all that bad. So let's just, let's jump into this sucker. Check out the list of recommended tools on the uh, Z1 Motorsports installation guide. Uh, I'd add a couple of additional in there, um, including uh, a small chisel. Uh, you'll see in the video why that becomes handy. Uh, a couple of things you'll probably that'll that'll really be helpful in getting you through this project would be an impact gun, a complete set of sockets, uh, some razor blades, um, screwdrivers, pry bar. Uh, you're you're gonna need some some stuff, uh, so just be ready for that. And you might have to just kind of be creative and and uh, use some things that, that you have at your disposal in order to get the the job done. Now under the car, I'm gonna remove the uh, sway bar end links, gonna remove the rear sway bar, probably gonna remove this little plastic piece, and then the heat shield covering the drive shaft. I'm gonna take this one up too, just for access purposes. Can access the mounts for the sway bars. We're also gonna loosen the support for the drive shaft down there. And that'll just give us some wiggle room so we can drop this down. These are 14s. ahead and loosen these bolts or sorry they're nuts actually as well just to move the brackets out of the way for the just gives us a little additional clearance for the rear diff as it comes down uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see but the speed sensors are up in here they're a little bit difficult to get to like this uh, we probably get one in there but there is a vent line up there as well on the top side so I think we want to try to lower it down maybe even before we pull the axles out just gonna try to go ahead and get these speed sensors out now. Oh, they're in there tight. <laughs> 12, 12 millimeter by the way. Now that we're getting to the point where we want to start pulling these axles out, I want to make sure we drain the rear diff. Uh, so we're dealing with as little fluid and as little mess as possible. So always make sure that this will crack loose before you open the drain plug. I just did it and it is loose, so we're golden. Plug doesn't look too bad. So go ahead and plug this up again. Just leave this in the car. We got it pretty well drained. 
I'll just be careful with the remaining. When we get it all the way out, I just loosen those nuts holding the drive shaft bracket down to just about the very end, just to give me some wiggle room. They're 17s right away. These are 17s. I'm just gonna loosen them a little bit and see what we got. It's a 19 up in here. Get a little bit of a swivel. It's gonna hit the trunk floor. Hopefully, I can break it loose. Gosh. Guess now, finish dropping these. So looking at our spare diff here, you can see this vent line is on the passenger side. So you can see that vent line right there. Oh, easy. There it is. Pretty much loose, but Still not sure how I'm gonna get these axles out. Cab, idiot neighbors. Okay, I'm just trying to be careful. Oh, I wish you guys would have seen it, but we got it. Just had to do some wiggling. Make sure these C clips are on. The bottoms, both are on. I don't know, we force those in later on, but. Son of a, it really just had to get my hands in there, as you can see, and jiggle it. And it helps having this loose, but you need, you do need a jack, something to support it. A second set of hands would be great. Uh, but as you get this one out and you kind of low, lower it down, the other one just kind of automatically pulls out by itself. Son of a bitch! That thing is a nightmare. 
Holy God damn. Like I said, messed up chisels, broken screwdriver, bent hammer, broken razor blades. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna take a sawzall and try to cut some relief cuts in here and then I don't know how the hell we're gonna get that sleeve out, but Jesus. Started a couple of relief cuts here. Hopefully we're getting all the way across. Just being really careful not to touch the actual subframe with the blade. I did get a little hand saw as well, so uh, for the final little cuts, we'll use that. Let's see if I can bend these out of here. Progress report. This is a nightmare. Progress report. We are making progress, and we're getting a little movement in the bushing. It's starting to push the back, so just need to get a little more relief in there. And I should be able to kind of collapse it. Time, but once the bushing at least once the bushing has been removed you want to lower this rear subframe because there's going to be a clearance issue here trying to get that sleeve in god it just keeps going more and more Ugh. all right subframe is lowered uh, you can wedge a little uh, pry bar in here too to try to get yourself a little bit more i have our frozen bushing here or sleeve at least Let's see if i can get it in here it in and see if there's any gap and if there is a gap we have these three one millimeter shims to close that gap up hopefully we don't need to um, but removing that old bushing sometimes can flare that center portion is what z one's saying so uh, if you have a gap again these shims will take care of it um, but we just want to start with putting a couple of these bolts in just to kind of tighten it down i think it's a three millimeter allen wrench Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you can get Yeah, so I'm just gonna let go ahead and get the shims in right away All three of them for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test 
only I could go back in time I tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help So you obviously want to close this internal gap But you want it to sit flush and flat on the outside surface And I think we're going to get there There's a little bit of wiggle There can be a little bit of wiggle in that middle gap but you definitely want it to be flush against the subframe. Okay, fitting flush on the front side. And flush on the back side. Yeah. There. Now we just have the poly bushing and the internal sleeve to slide in. Uh, you can see one end of the bushing is tapered. That slides in first. I just shined it up with a little WD-40 just because a little extra. But you can tap it in with a mount. Z, make Z1 face up, I guess. We'll tap the wood again. Alright, rotate it on me, damn. There she is, people. Oh. Insulation itself, not too bad at all. The worst part is getting the factory bushing out. By far, by far the worst part. And then tightening down every one of these little Allen screws that took a while too. Um, otherwise, not so bad. Glad it's over. Now we gotta get the rear diff back in. I guess I'll show some clips of that, but it's kind of a reverse order. And if you guys wanna see it in more detail, we'll have it uh, included with the Traction Concepts LSD conversion kit, but time to secure the subframe back up, get everything back in place, and uh, we gotta get the uh, those bushings out. Now it's time to, to uh, knock these forward bushings out toward the front of the dip. Um, they recommend a 34 millimeter socket. Just kind of fits in there. This is from the bottom side, so you wanna you pound them. You rotate it so the diff is upside down, pound them down. I propped it up on a piece of wood to give me some some room. They recommend a deep socket. Uh, I couldn't find one. I don't have one. So uh, we're going to go with this one and see if we can get them most of the way out. I did soak them with WD-40. Hopefully that helps. Let's get after it. Nuts are torqued down. Now you can see the forward bushings look good there. Uh, I've got the sway bar back in and the drive shaft put back in as well. Uh, in order to get the drive shaft in, you have to uh, 
remove the bracket in the center of the drive shaft completely and allow it, and allow it to fold. And you get it on the little post here and then you put the bracket back up and once everything straightens out, it sort of jams itself back into place. Uh, the line's lined up here. I'm not sure that that's completely necessary, but it didn't hurt to put everything back how it was. I'm gonna spare you guys uh, the reinstallation of all the shields and braces and everything. Uh, we did put the brackets back here. I'm going to put the diff brace back in, um, but I wanna test the bushing kit first uh, without any influence from the brace. Uh, so we'll wait a little while to put that back in, but that's easy enough. Uh, subframe is bolted back up, torqued down. Uh, you guys just want to make sure you go through everything and you touch every bolt again. You don't want to leave anything loose on accident. Um, once I make sure everything is good, then we'll put all the plastics back up and we'll put the, the, sh the heat shield back up and everything like that. So just want to eliminate additional work if we do have to take anything off fingers crossed that we don't have to well guys z1 motorsports is not lying when they say this is a difficult installation because it is it takes a little bit of patience you may have to sacrifice a few tools you're gonna get some dirty hands and you're probably gonna swear a few times uh, but i think you can handle it watching this video and following the instructions that z1 motorsports has on their website i gotta say i'm not a professional i'm not a mechanic uh, but just use this sort of maybe as a guide, but do this installation, take on this project on, at your own risk. I should say that. Uh, can't be responsible for anything that happens because you got to take great care and not damaging your rear subframe. It's very, very important. Uh, but I do have to say that 250 bucks for this kit is way better than $2,500 uh, replacing the entire rear subframe at the dealership. That's, that's crazy. And a lot of you guys, like myself, have failing rear diff bushings and if they haven't failed yet they're going to so I'm, I'm, I'm super excited that Z1 came out with this kit and we finally got it installed a little bit tough like I said but I think you can handle it this Q50 really is going to be a whole new animal now at this point so looking forward to get it out on the street stay tuned for a full review video as well as a full series of testing videos that in combination with the traction concepts limited slip uh, conversion kit uh, this thing is going to be a beast now uh, of course, I use the word beast loosely because we're only making 350-ish horsepower or something like that. But it's going to be a way more efficient car in terms of putting that power to the ground and using every single one of those horsepowers and every single foot-pound of torque that the thing makes. So stick around, guys. I appreciate the continued support. I appreciate you guys following along, and I appreciate Z1 for the support in these projects, both with the Q50 and the 350Z. Again, stick around. More to come. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching.